Józef Piłsudski is one of the most famous and important historical figures in Polish history. It is through his struggle, his perseverance, and his leadership that Poland was reborn on a map of Europe. Therefore, to many people, he is seen as the father of Polish independence following the First World War. Poland lost its independence in 1795 after the country was invaded and partitioned by its three strong neighbors, the Austrian Empire, the Kingdom of Prussia, and the Russian Empire. Poland disappeared from the map of Europe for 123 years. The country reappearing on the map of Europe was a testament to the people's struggle and sacrifice over the years for the sovereignty of a country that only existed as such in their hearts. However, almost immediately, in 1919, Poland's freedom was once again threatened. This time, when Soviet Russia invaded from the east. Polish military was able not only to hold the advances, but also to push them back in what is known as the Battle of Warsaw. Many historians today agree that this was one of the most significant battles in modern European history. Not only Poland was safe, but also the fate of Europe. One of the most important reasons for the invasion was an ideological component, and that was to spread the Bolshevik Revolution to Western Europe. Order number 10,000, the order for the Battle of Warsaw, is arguably the most important document we hold here at our institute from August 10th, 1920. It was written by General Rozwadowski under the supervision of Józef Piłsudski, and it describes the Polish military's movement on the battlefield during the Battle of Warsaw. Now, one may wonder why such a famous and important historical document of Poland is here in New York City at the Institute, thousands of miles away from Poland. Well, the history of this institute is long and fascinating. In 1939, when Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union invaded Poland, and the country was once again left fighting for its freedom, a collection of confidential military documents known as the Belvedere Archives were taken out of Warsaw in a secret and highly dangerous operation. However, those wooden boxes containing the archival documents eventually make their way into the United States at the end of 1941. Pilsudski's allies and representatives of Polonia decided to establish a new home for these documents, a place where they could be preserved and at the same time educate the American public about Polish culture and history. That was the beginning of the Józef Pilsudski Institute here in New York City, 1943, taking the name of Marshal Pilsudski himself. Ever since, the archival collections grew steadily over the years, and today, the Institute is one of the more important centers of research in modern Polish history. Interestingly, those wooden boxes that were saved from Warsaw in 1939 not only contained important military documents, but also the personal archives of Piłsudski himself. Therefore, our institute has his family records, letters written to his friends and close political allies, as well as many photographs. And it is through those photographs that we see a charismatic leader and really the evolution of his life from being a rebellious youth, a fierce opponent of the Russian Empire, through his exile in Siberia, to the creation and leadership of the Polish legions, which was a legendary Polish units created inside of the Austro-Hungarian armies during the First World War. After World War I, Piłsudski held many positions in Poland. He was the first chief of state, as well as the marshal. However, in reality, he was the de facto leader of the Second Polish Republic until his death in 1935. 
He was a person who put a lot of value on family life. Therefore, we have a lot of photographs of him in Solyubin, his favorite country house, just on the outskirts of Warsaw. There he spent quality time with his family, his wife Alexandra, and two daughters, Yadviga and Banda. The collections of Marshall Pilzutsky can be viewed online at pilzutsky.org. In the last 80 years, many people were part of the Institute's history as they devoted their lives to serve Polonia. Today, the Institute is a modern, bustling with life institution dedicated to preserving and promoting Polish heritage in the USA. Our archives are open as we have more than 1 million documents used by researchers and historians from all over the world. In the last 15 years, we took on a challenging task of preserving documents through the process of digitalization. Now, a large part of our collection, including precious military documents saved from Poland on the onset of the Second World War, are available on our webpage. Yearly, the Institute organizes around 33 public events at its headquarters in the heart of Greenpoint, Brooklyn. We educate about Polish history through popular meetings with famous historians, documentary film screenings, and art exhibitions. The Institute offers history classes and art workshops for school children that bring Polish traditions to life. Every few years, the Institute has an awards gala to honor the achievements of outstanding individuals in the field of history, art, science, and literature. The Institute is widely recognized and appreciated by Polish and American officials. Over the years, some of the highest ranking members of the Polish government, including presidents, first ladies, and prime ministers visited the Institute all are welcome to visit the Institute to see our collections and learn more about Poland's culture and history. The Art Gallery of the Pilsudski Institute has a special place in our collection. All the art pieces, they are gifts from generous donors with ties to the Institute. Those people, often members of the board of directors, decided to leave the legacy for the future generations of Polonia. Thanks to the gesture, now we can admire an impressive collection of some of the most acclaimed Polish painters, such as Jan Matejko, Jacek Malczewski, Aleksander Gierynski, Wojciech Kossak, Józef Mehofer, Stanisław Wyspiański, and others. The Art Gallery of the Pulsudski Institute is open to the public, and everyone is welcome to come and admires the treasures of Polish art. We would like to mention a few of our benefactors who either donated the art piece to our gallery or left a significant monetary bequest to the Institute. The Institute was established in 1943, and almost 80 years later, we strongly believe that it will continue to last for many generations to come. If you are interested in our legacy giving program, please contact us. In addition, we encourage you to become a member of the Institute, and those who are already members, to renew your membership each year. We are very grateful to all of our members and donors and volunteers. The Institute exists because of people like you. Together we can do more for the new generations of Polish Americans.